Great day everyone. In this video, we are going to continue the lecture for international business and trade. So let's all get started. So for this lecture, we are going to cover the modern theories. Because if you would remember last time, we have covered the classical theories of international trade. Now, these people are the proponents for the modern theories. So let's look at all of the theories one by one. No? So the first theory is what we call as the human capital theory. Uh, this is one of the modern theories of international trade. So this was um, advocated by Becker, Kennan, and Kessing. Now, according to this theory, both individuals' decision to invest in human capital, such as education and training, and the pattern of individuals' lifetime earnings are determinants of international trade. So, yung investments for skills, for their roles, no, on people, such as education and trading, all play a factor in uh, the growth of international trade. Now, the theory considers labor as a homogeneous factor, meaning when you talk of labor, it has to be standard or it is common all throughout your population. No? So, homogeneous siya. Uh, Pare-pareho sila ng skill. And whatever skill it might be, whether it's farming, manufacturing, or what have you, it is common no, because it's homogeneous. Now, the education skills and talents needs to be invested in the human capital. Kaya nga dito yung center is the, the person, the human capital. Now, according to Kessing, the patterns of international trade and location were predetermined for a broad group of manufacturers by the relative abundance of skilled and unskilled labor. So, when you talk of labor, dalawa kasi yan, eh, no? it could be skilled or unskilled. Pag sinabi mong skilled labor, um, it involves high, uh, high amounts of training or longer, uh, longer exposure to training, education, so on and so forth. In such a manner na itong, eh, itong um, ability itong skill nila no, to do labor is very good. Whereas for unskilled labor, ito yung raw. No? Uh, natuto lang sila through experience. Wala silang formal education. So, both of these things play an important factor. Ano ba yung mas madami sa bansa mo? Unskilled labor or skilled labor? So, looking at our example, in a developing country like India, that has more abundant supply of unskilled labor, tandaan na, kasi developing country lang yan, meaning, mas mataas yung poverty incidence dyan. So, mas madami yung unskilled laborers, meaning they are untrained, they don't have sufficient education, their talents are not fully developed, no? they just learn from experience, yun yung unskilled labor. So, they will specialize and export those goods na gawa nila through unskilled labor. Whereas, they will import, sabi dito, no, import, on the other hand, goods, commodities, which are high-tech or more skill-intensive. Kumbaga, yung mga produkto na mahirap gawin or requires a specific uh, skill, no? Like for example, ito uh, it involves IT, no? It involves uh, software programming, engineering, whatnot. Ano yun? Eh, skilled labor ang kailangan mo dun, ano? Kasi talaga pag-aaralan nila yun. Hindi yun yung tipong matututunan mo lang dahil may nagsabi sa yon inside the factory. No, it would take years and years of education and training. Yung mga bagay na yon hindi nila kayang gawin and they would have to import that. Kasi hindi nga nila kayang gawin eh. Ang kaya lang nilang gawin are the, the common ones. Like sa cellphone, pag sinabi mong skilled labor, yun na yung, yung microchip niya, 
yung process or so on and so forth. Pero kapag sinabi mo unskilled labor, ang ginagawa lang nila dyan would be the casing, yung uh, glass for the screen, yung mga mas madali-daling parts ng isang cellphone. Ano? So, yung mga bagay niya, they can export, pero yung inner parts of the cellphone, yung pinakamahalaga, they would have to import. No? So, yun yung theory ni uh, Gary S. Becker, Kenan and Kessing. Now, next, we have the identical preferences theory. So, based on the principle that trade opportunities are more among countries that are of similar, tandaan ninyo, a similar stage of development. So, trade opportunities are more among countries at similar stage of development with similar demand structure. So, kagaya niya, no, ang example natin, Japan and America. So, why? Classical theories did not account for other sources or resources used in the production of commodity or manufactured goods for exports, such as transportation costs, the use of land and capital. And this failure was addressed by the subsequent trade theories. So, the problem with the classical theories is that hindi the cover itong factor of nasaan na bang stage of development yung bansa. Hindi naman kasi basta-basta, oh, okay, I want this product, or you are already engaging in trading. No. Merong certain levels, or there are certain um, stages. No? Kunwari, you are at the upper stage, or at the middle, or you are at the bottom stage. No? Let's say third world countries, first world countries. No? So, sila yung mga magkakaterno, dapat. Kasi pareho sila ng demand structure, eh. Like again, example natin, Japan and US, they are the largest trade partners because of their um, identical consumer preferences and similar stage of development. Pareho kasi sila ng stages of development, ang US at ang Japan. So, sila yung most likely magtitrade dahil they are both first world countries, they are superpowers, they are... Um, Countries that prefer quality products, no? Pagka sinabi mo made in US or made in Japan, talagang matindi ang quality niya, ano? Um, yun yung mga produkto that would stand the test of time. Uh, kagaya nga ng uh, example ko earlier, no? Yung mga, let's say you buy items, Japan surplus, Okay? Kahit na luma na siya or pinaglumaan na siya nung may-ari, it can still arrive here in a condition na pwede pa siyang gamitin. And in fact, binibili pa ng mga Pilipino. Why? Because ganun kat katindi ang quality no? ng kanilang mga produkto at serbisyo. It would stand the test of time. Talagang hindi madaling masira. And tayo as Filipinos, meron nga tayong sinasabi na pag made in China mas uh, madali siyang masira no or the quality is poor so that's the reason why both of these countries trade with one another because they are of the same demand structure so yun yung is another factor for international trading dapat daw parehong bansa uh, ang magte-trade and by the way this was um advocated for or developed by Linder, which is what you call the Linder Principle. Ano? Siya yung nag-postulate na itong theory na to. Third, we have the Strategic Trade Theory. So, another international trade theory is a combination of game theory and theories of industrial organization by Spencer and Brander. So, they are the authors of this theory. And according to strategic theory, industries are characterized by any or all of the following. Um, scale or economies of scale. Kapag sinabi mong economies of scale, uh, the larger the companies are, the more cheaper the product becomes. Because they can um, lower no, the overhead price dahil mas malaki sila eh. Na like for example, you have water, or you have bread, or you have your basic needs. No? Kapag ka mas maliit yung nagbebenta, mas mahal. Kasi konti lang yung kanyang tools. No? 
to do such. But if uh, that commodity is ha- um, sold or delivered by a large company, bigger scale company, then mas magmumura yung presyo niya. Both dynamic and static. Product differentiation, imperfect competition, externality, spillover, and in cases, irreversible investments. So, itong mga bagay na ito are the, uh, under the strategic trade theory. So, let's look at them. Um, product differentiation can result in intra-industry trade. So, intra, when you say intra, it's within the industry. Since within the same industry, the same product can have different brand and uh, identities. Like, for example, you have Ford um, Escort no? or Ford GT, no? Mustang, Ford Mustang. And then, it, pero kahit na kaya ng US na maggawa ng Ford Escort or Mustang or other brands of under Ford no? or models under Ford rather, it would still import other types of automobiles. Like for example, BMW from Germany. So bakit nila yun gagawin? Kahit na kaya naman nila mag-produce ng magagandang quality ng cars. Because BMW is product differentiated. No, It caters to different types of customers. Pag sinabi mong BMW, konti lang ang kayang mag-afford ng BMW. Hindi lahat kaya ang bumili ng BMW. Um, BMW is more like of a status symbol. Na kapag sinuot, ah, pag sinuot, pagka um, meron ka niyan, or you, can, you drive a BMW, you are elite. <laughs> you belong to the higher class of the society. So people buy it for statement or they are trying to make a statement. Okay? So, Within the industry, kahit parehong maganda yung quality, they would still import or export products. So, kagaya ng example natin, strategic trade. No? Imperfect competition creates brands and trade policies could shift brands from the foreign countries to the home countries. So, yung imperfect competition daw is also one of the effects of strategic trade theory. Like for example, here, um, luma- nag-boom din yung uh condominium real estate industry kasabay ng pagboom ng BPO industry why because a lot of foreign nationals are going to the Philippines no yung mga managers from US o di kaya yung mga um team leaders or country managers yung magba-manage mismo ng na call center or ng BPO they cannot purchase land kasi because it's stated in the constitution na dapat Filipino lang ang pwede mag-own ng land, no? Ngayon, since they cannot purchase land, no, or erect properties, then their next course would be to rent. Kaya mataas yung cases of rent. Nagboom din yung rent indirectly. So imperfect competition creates, no, that type of um uh effect no? so that's another um product of strategic trade theory next we have irreversible investments they induce an asymmetry between entry and exit costs and can can therefore lead to hysteretic responses to price or quantity shifts so there are some investments na hindi mo na pwedeng withdrawin dahil masyado na siyang malaki. Like for example, when US invested in Japan, if you're familiar with CAT no, or CAT or yung mga um, ve- uh, vehicles that are being used for uh, yan, kagaya niyan, pang hukay or when you are trying to build um certain uh, infrastructures no so they partnered with Japan kagaya na nga nam nabanggit natin kanina and they have invested heavily in Japan but there was a time where in tumaas yung value ng dollar and because dollar was, uh, was higher uh, compared to yen at that time it means mas bumaba yung um value no? or parang nalugi sila. 
no? So they have the option of just going bankrupt, no? Going bankrupt or i-discontinue business, but they didn't. Why? Kasi malaki ni investment nila eh. Hindi biro yung mga pinatayo nilang planta, mga equipment na binild nila sa Japan. So they found out a way, no, to adapt to the situation. So what they did was they partnered with Suzuki. So para nakipag-tandem sila with Suzuki so that all of their equipment, yung mga binild nila na plants and all can still be used. Okay? Kumbaga parang pinarentahan nila sa Suzuki. Uh, in that way, kumita pa rin sila, no? Uh, so that's an example of irreversible investment. Malaking capital na inilabas, hindi pwedeng basta-basta pahintuin, no, yung business. And then spillover effects causing positive, negative and externalities. So for my example, I don't know these people, no, but I just use them for my example because uh let's say you you are running a school, okay? And then these are your students. And then because these are your students and then nakita sila ng mga ibang um students from another school, they have decided ah gusto ko mag-aral sa school na yan because may nag-aaral diyan na mukhang um Korean actress or uh, Korean novela actor. And in effect, dumami yung population ng school, lumago yung school, dumami yung students. So that's a uh, positive effect for the school. However, Itong dalawang estudyante na to, they did not receive any compensation whatsoever from the school. Bakit? Hindi naman kasi hiningi ng school sa kanila na dito kayo mag-aral at dahil sa inyo ay dumami ang aming mga estudyante. No? So, in their end, it's negative. Bakit? Kasi parang na-exploit sila. Eh, no? Parang nagamit sila. Pero, wala naman silang naging kabayaran or wala silang nakuhang kapalit doon sa positive outcome na naibigay nila sa isang um, industry so or sa isang company rather. So, positive, negative, or what you call spillover effects. So, for example, no in a metropolitan city where there is traffic most of the time, you would think of it as a negative scenario. No? This is negative kasi traffic, late, malilate ka sa work, uh, you would have only a few hours to render for your work. No? Kware 8 to 5 kailas, dumating ka 10. Dahil sa traffic, no? 2 hours ang nawala sa iyo. 2 hours of productive time. So, negative yung traffic. However, in traffic, may mga positive effects. Like, for example, yung mga maliliit na entrepreneurs natin, yung mga sinasabi nga natin, nag, mga vendor, no? Sa kalsada, nagbebenta ng sigarilyo, nagbebenta ng drinks, nagbebenta ng car equipment, etc. May kasabihan nga tayo, eh, na kapag ka nakakita ka na ng mga tao na nagbebenta in a highway, it means traffic or traffic, um, heavy traffic is approaching. So, yun yung isa sa mga bagay that we can consider as a spillover effect. And that is under strategic trade theory. Okay? So, lastly, let's go to modern investment theory. This is the fourth type of modern um, trade theories. And this was developed by Robert Hagen. According to him, no, firms within an oligopoly enter foreign markets merely as a competitive response. So, meron palang ganun, ano? Their real intention is just to compete. Okay? Their reason why they have entered an international, um, uh, the international arena is because they just wanted to compete. Gusto lang nila ipakita sa kanilang kalaban na kaya nilang sumabay. Okay? The actions of an industry leader and to equalize relative advantages. Oligopolies are those market situations in which there are few sellers of a product and that is usually mass merchandise. So, 
uh, when you think of oligopolies, you can look at PLDT and Smart with Globe. No? So, dalawa lang yung telco na yan sa Philippines. And what you would observe is that naggagayahan lang sila ng mga product. Okay? Pagka nag-offer yung Globe ng uh, let's say GOTS Combo 90, makikita mo the following week or the following days, may product na rin na ganun yung Smart and PLDT. 90 pesos and then ganito karaming gigabyte. Or vice versa, mag introduce si Smart ng ganitong promo, gagayahin ni Globe. So, parang pareho lang, ano? Pagka kinumpare mo, pareho lang ng pricing. And what we are not realizing in reality is that nag-uusap-usap ang oligopolis. Itong PLDT and Smart ay nakikipag-usap kay Globe, of course. Or they are comparing their products. And since dalawa lang sila na nag offer ng service, sa isang malaking um, area, they can agree na, okay, iset natin sa ganitong presyo. If they would like to get load, the cheapest is 50 pesos. So, magkokopyahan lang sila. That's good for the business, but it's bad for the consumers. Okay? Or, sometimes, the the negative effects of oligopolies is that the customers do not benefit much or they are not given the um, ultimate benefit or optimum benefit because the oligopolies are working with each other. No? Itong mga company na to nag, nakikipag-connive sila with each other para hati yung kanilang kita. No? So that's the problem with oligopolies. Another thing is that according to the modern investment theory, okay, ginagawa rin ito ng malalaking companies, particularly oligopolies, because no, they don't want to put all of their eggs in one basket. What does it mean by that? No, they want uh, they want to spread their risk. No, hindi pa pwedeng lahat nakalagay lang sa isang type of business. Like for example, ngayon, ano, the, during the time of pandemic, maraming businesses or industries ang greatly affected like the airline industry, the hotel industry, the tourism industry. Okay? So, those industries were greatly affected by the pandemic. And if you are a businessman, tapos let's say nandun lang yung investments mo sa tatlong nabanggit ko, of course, by now, you are or you would have already been bankrupt. Lugi ka na. Okay? But since most oligopolies are doing this to spread the risk, hindi lang yun yung business nila, marami silang mga businesses. Okay? At dahil marami silang businesses, kahit malugi sila dun sa ibang areas, merong iba naman silang business na continuously kumikita. At, pwedeng ipang sapat dun sa mga kalugihan ng isa. So, that's the reason why some businesses are um, investing in other countries. Okay? So, they could spread their risk. Now, the impetus for a firm to go abroad may come from a wish to expand for internal reasons. No, kagaya nung sabi nga natin, no? personal reasons to compete para ipakita sa kalaban niya na kaya rin niya. In additional spheres of operation to take advantage of technology or to use raw materials available in other locations, of course. Meron talagang mga raw materials na available lang in specific countries. So that's another reason why businesses invest abroad no? or conduct interna uh, international trading. And lastly, uh, an example of an oligopoly would be the OPEC no? or oil petroleum exporting countries because they control 80% of oil in the world. Itong 12 countries na to are controlling 80% of the oil in the world. Imagine, no, kapag ka, kasi tinatawag na nga silang cartel. Eh. Why? Because they have the monopoly of the the product no? or the resource. So, it's dangerous in a way because if they would decide na okay, hindi na kami, we will stop production or parang i-hold natin. 
maraming maapektuhan ng mga bansa. Okay? And it again, it is a form of a danger. And at, but at the same time, we can't do anything about it because these 12 countries have access to this natural resource. At talagang yung mga um, Muslim countries, eh, nandun sila sa part of the world or geographical location na available yung oil. So we can't do anything about it. Okay? That wraps up our discussion. I hope you have learned something from this and um, we will continue the next topic on our next video. Uh, please follow me on all the platforms I am in and you can send me a message directly over at Facebook or LinkedIn for queries. That will be all. Thank you so much and to God be all the glory. Till our next episode.